welcome to Namibia. Today I'm on the, uh, the Amev farm, uh, which is just outside the uh, Tosha National Park uh, in the district of Uchu in uh, northwest uh, uh, Namibia. I'm working on the farm today with the Brand family. And three generations have been working the, uh, this frontier land and, and growing uh, and breeding their own brand of cattle, which is a hybrid of uh, Bonsmara, Brahman, Africana, and they even have a few Jersey cows on their farm as well. Now, as you know, I run a hunting agency, so my background really isn't farming. So today what I'm going to tell you is my personal opinion. I'm no expert, but I am a consumer, and I know what a good steak tastes like when I see it, and I know what healthy cattle look like when I see those two. The difference is, I guess, between the, the reality here and the reality in Europe. In Europe, we have a very different set of priorities. And unfortunately, I have to use the word bullshit here because it seems to me that as consumers in England, we're fed an awful lot of that stuff when it comes to the food that we eat. Let's not talk about cattle for a second. I want to talk to you about uh, chickens and, and eggs, for example. Now, we have factory farm chicken. We have factory eggs. We have barn fresh eggs. We have free range eggs. We have all of these different terms for eggs, but ultimately, that all comes down to a price, a price that we pay based on the perceived value and the perceived lifestyle that the chickens that lay those eggs have in order for us to consume what we consider to be the best. Now right now, and I'm speaking personally, I have to stress that, right now in the UK, there's a huge move towards organic foods. But what is organic food? What is organic farming? Now, again, I'm no expert, but I have to tell you, out here, organic and free range have two different meanings. In the UK, I have to say to you that uh, organic foods, it's not lazy farming, it just means that the, the, the cattle are just left to their own devices. Okay, that may work well if you're, uh, if you're farming tomatoes or potatoes, an organic fruit and veg, yeah, that's a good thing, and it tastes, it tastes just, as, just as fine as the other stuff, I'm sure. I grow my own fruit and vegetable in England, so, you know, that, I'm an organic farmer, I guess. But when it comes to cattle, organic doesn't really cut it in this environment. It's a hard, unforgiving place, and as you can tell from the grassland around me, this is good grazing. This is some of the best grazing that I've seen so far while I've been over on this particular trip. But that doesn't mean that the cattle can really fend for themselves in this environment. They need to be inoculated. They need to be protected from some of the, some of the hazardous species of insect and bacteria that, that, uh, that thrive in these conditions. Imagine, if you will, the human body compared to a tomato plant. It's two different things, and you can't compare the two. So organic farming, when it comes to fruit and veg, that's fine. But when it comes to human beings, we suffer from infections, viruses, and all manner of other different maladies and illnesses. And we need to be protected from that, otherwise we fall sick. Hey, it's no different from these guys. As you can see, the cattle here are in great condition. They're, they're looked after, and they're really, they thrive in these conditions. And I have to say, when, when, when they don't have the fur on and they're on the plate, the taste, well, the taste is something like you've never had before. Are they organic? No, they're not organic because they've been inoculated uh, against some of the viruses and, uh, and, and diseases that they might fall, fall, proud, pra, uh, fall prey to. But what they are is free range. Now, free range in England means something different. It's almost as if it's a way of, of hiding the facts from the consumer about where the chickens actually really live. Free range, barn fresh. Out here, this, this is free range. It means that they have the run of extended periods of, of land where they can live, raise their, raise their young, and they can graze freely amongst some, some really, really beautiful countryside. As I say, I'm no expert, and this has nothing to do with my personal business. But I have to say, as a consumer of beef in England, and a consumer of beef wherever I go, hey, I'm English, I'm a beef eater. That's, that's what we do, yeah? I just thought I wanted to put the record straight for some of you guys who may be a bit confused as to what organic farming really is. You have to make a personal choice when it comes to the food that you eat, the food that you put on the table for your families to enjoy, and I have to say, take a look around at this. Where would you want your beef to be raised? Organic? Yeah. That's great if you're a tomato grower. Free-range beef from northern Namibia, from the Amed farm in particular, is second to none. I'm sorry if I've uh, given you a talking to today, but I thought uh, maybe you guys would be interested in how the, 
how the reality of farming is uh, in this particular country. I'm sorry if it's been a bit of a rant, but hey, just see for yourselves. It makes a big difference if you're a free-range farmer and giving the guys the open range to, to graze on. My name's Rupert Ellis from the Hunting Agency. I hope you've, uh, hope you've enjoyed my, uh, my thoughts on farming for today. In the meantime, I only have some cattle to work. Have a great day.